Welcome back. We are here with our very special guest, Dr. Joe Dudley of Dudley Products. And we are getting a wealth of wisdom here on today with some very funny stories that are motivating. And I'm telling you right now, I'm like a little kid in a candy store. Um, I'm, I'm feeling I'm grateful and very elated to be sitting here with Mr. Dudley. I, I can touch his hand, y'all. <laughs> so this is, this is very special for us because why? As a community, self-sufficiency and, and economic development is very important. And when we have someone like Mr. Dudley among us, right, we can sit here and talk to you and hear you and, and you can teach us and we are here to be teachable, yes? so that we can get from where we are to where we say we want to be. There's a lot of people talking about making a million dollars and six figures and all that kind of stuff, but they're selling books and doing seminars, and that's okay, but you actually did the work, Mr. Dudley. And not only did you raise smart kids, children who are, who are exceptional adults now, um, but you also had a mentor, and that's what this is, guys. You also have a, had a mentor who helped to get you to where you are to even today. Oh, yes. Yes. And so talk to us about Mr. Fuller and how you built your business and, and how you got started and all of that so we can uh, glean from your experience. Well, I had an exciting journey. Okay. Uh, from the time that boy, smart boy, and I called him ugly because I was mad took my girlfriend away from me. I, I left home, I wasn't a good student. I changed after two years, of, last two years of high school. And there were six of us in college at one time. Ooh. And my parents couldn't afford to pay for any of us to go to school. But prior to that, uh, there was, we had lived in a shack, 14 lived in, three little rooms. Fourteen of you? Fourteen. Nine slept in one bed. My oh. house burned down. Dad asked my older brother, said, do y'all want to stay out of school for a year and build a house? My oldest brother, thank God, said no. We want to go to school. So mama, had, had really pushed all her kids to go to school. And all of us did, all of us finished college. I was a black sheep of the family at that time. And uh, so I went off to Hartford, Connecticut. I was determined, I was inspired. I saved $100 a week in 1956. What? Oh, uh, I, I worked every job. I took on the nastiest job in the chicken process. Plant and I worked every day I could, and I saved my money. And so when December came, six months later, I uh, uh, saved enough money, went back, to, came came to A and T, got in. It was tough for me because I didn't have the basic foundation. Okay. So I I be very determined. So I went on to Connecticut, and my older brother had just finished college by that time. He took me up there and I started doing what I just shared with you. Mm -hmm. So that went on real good. I came back the next year, I couldn't find a job. So that was disappointing. But I drew unemployment. Mm -hmm. It was $34 a week and it was $34 a week because I had made so much money at that time, in 1956, 57, okay. mm -hmm. uh, uh, at that time, that was a lot of money. $34 a week was a lot of money yeah. in 1957. Yeah. So I said, okay. So I went to help a young lady to find a job because I, I, I'd rather draw unemployment than work for $40 a week. So, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I laugh about that sometimes now. But anyhow, uh, uh, I took a young lady to help her look for a job. After taking her to look for a job, 
I saw a lady, I saw a gentleman on the street, his bag was open. It was the Rosemead product with Mr. Fuller on the company. Mm. And taking her home look for a job, I didn't know I would find my life work. Oh. I found my life work oh. by helping somebody else. Fine. So therefore, wow. I had never had to work for anybody since that time. Okay, so in 1957, right, the year I was born, <laughs> okay, when $34 was a, a week was a lot of money, you actually found your life work I found helping somebody else. somebody else. Help somebody, y'all. Yeah. Okay, that, yeah. you're right, yeah. help I'm, somebody. I'm it was the most exciting thing of my life. When I think about it over, so mm -hmm. I went, went to the office and said, oh, all you have to have was $10. I got in business for $10. And I carry that on, and the $10 after getting into business. Uh, mm -hmm. I didn't meet Mr. Fuller until five years later. I worked there for him, but he, he was in Chicago in okay. the branch office. Was in Brooklyn, New York. One of his branches. Mm -hmm. He had about eighty branches. Okay, so wait a minute. So, so Mr. Fuller, another black man, has eighty branches of businesses of his business across the country, and you hadn't met him yet. And so, what? So, what am I doing? I'm saying, okay. So here's Mr. Dudley just getting started, and there was another black man already doing business at a scale where there's distribution offices across the country. Right. So, so ding, 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 ding. This is like something should be going off in your head right now because S.B. Fuller, your mentor, was, had created business in America as a black man in the 30s and 40s and 50s. Yes while everybody else was just coming up out of sharecropping mm -hmm. and, and, and had a mentality that you can't do anything. So I just wanted to string the lineage together and, and you'll do it way better than me, but I don't want our audience to miss that. Yes. So, so, so continue, so you didn't meet Mr. Fuller until five years later? Right, oh. but he had good managers. Mm. This man's mind was George John H. Johnson. He was the guy that was in charge of the branch that I went into. And he was tough. He had tough love mm. for us. But anyhow, I, I went to met Mr. Fuller later and I was doing good. And he, he, he really talked to me. He said, I want you to be self-sufficient. Self mm -hmm. Well, I had gotten very frustrated at one time and I was going to leave, and I wanted to go raise hogs. So he took me up, to, had me to come up to Chicago. I got there. Well, I had so much respect for him that I, I so I'm going up there because I had already planned I'm going to raise some hogs, so I get my proper turn. And I'm tired of messing with these people that don't want nothing. Mm. So then I uh, got there, and so Mr. Full said. And he talked to me, he waited for me. I was there three weeks, he took good care of me. Okay. Then the, about the last day or so, I get ready to leave. He, well, Joe, um, he called me Mr. Dudley from the beginning, I don't know why. And he says, it's sort of, tell me about how you gonna live being, being raising hogs. So he had me to tell him. Mm -hmm. that, I couldn't tell him because I lived so good until. Uh, so, but anyhow, you didn't have a plan. I had no plan. So he said, "Look, why don't you go to Alabama and run that branch I got in Alabama?" So I said, "Okay, uh, Birmingham, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Mr. Spalding. I can't think of the name right now, but anyhow." I was on my way there. I stopped in Greensboro. I like Greensboro because I went to college here. And okay. I, 
call Mr. Fool up and say, Mr. Fool, uh, I, uh, I think I was staying green. You make that town a little small for you. I said, well, I, I like Greensboro. He said, well, dude, I don't like too much racist stuff going on in Alabama. I don't want to go there. He said, well, go to Memphis, Tennessee. So I got on my way to Memphis, Tennessee, and saw all those mountains and all that mm -hmm. stuff. I called him up and said, Mr. Fuller, I can't live in Memphis, Tennessee. They got too many. So finally, I stopped in Greensboro. And I, that's where I saw it. Now, he showed me how to build a business. Not only that, he gave me formulation uh, for the business. And then he, at the end of it, he sold me his company. Uh, uh, so he was with me. He said, I've trained several thousand people. Man. And you're the only one out of 10,000 people or more that I think can help me build my the company. I want you to have it in so many words. So that was the wow. beginning for me to go on. Now, now the company, I had sold so many products, so the company didn't have enough product for me. So it showed me how to make my product. So I didn't have money, but I had faith. I had some sense too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I really, I uh, started making products. Uh, I started making products in my kitchen. Uh, and some people around me were with me when I started in the kitchen making products. I went to the beauty salon and picked up old containers. Wow. And my wife typed the labels. And I made the product by night and sold it by day. I worked, and I had some most loyal people that you could find working with me. I still have many of them, got 50, uh, been with me for 50 years, and they've been with me. We got one, Robert Melvin here, 50 years. Astounding. And, and yeah. uh, they stayed with me. So I knew this was God's mission. It was not my mission, because yes, these, yes. he sent me the people that I needed and he gave me a, some challenge too. Mm -hmm. they, I mean, you know, trying to build this business. Yes, yes. He but I him. came back to Greensboro from Chicago because I wanted to build a business and show our people that you can be, you can do it. I don't care what they say you are, but only you can decide mm. who you are and what you want to be now. So when I got started, I started the business, I had some rules. So we, let's get to your rules in a moment. What I, wanted, what I want to make sure that we are hearing is the, the legacy, the stringing how he's pulling it together. When we come back, we're going to talk about the rules that you had. And, and also, I'm going to go and dig a little bit deeper into, that, into what you just shared with us. We're here with Mr. Joe Dudley, Dudley Products. And we're going to talk more about how you were walking by faith because you just said something profound about how God makes a way for us, right, and challenges. We'll be right back. You're watching the Oneness Wellness Lifestyle Show, and I'm your host, Sheep Thanks so much for watching. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. <laughs> 